Hello, this is Jack Jackson. This video, you're going to see me put in the program that I talked about in the previous video. This is for finding uh, numerical integration, in other words, approximations of a definite integral. So when we run the program, we're going to start by putting our formula in y1, and we're going to use that. So to start programming in a program, we're going to hit Program. We're going to hit Go Over to New, Create a New Program and we give it a name. I'm going to call this one integral I can just go these these are in alphabetical order. Okay, so we're going to call the program integral. Okay, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to ask the program to 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 ask the user for a, b, and n. A, b are the limits of integration. N is the number of subdivisions. So we do that with the prompt command. So we hit program. Notice before we got a list of programs that we could run. This is different now. We get control and input output statements and some executing statements. So what we're going to do prompt is under uh, IO and it's number two. We're going to prompt for alpha A, B, and alpha N. So when you run the program, it's going to come up with A question mark and the user types in A. Then it'll do B question mark, wait for the user to type in B and enter and so forth. Okay, we're going to figure out delta X. Delta X is going to be uh, B minus A divide by n and since I don't really oops let's try that again b minus a parentheses divide by n there we go and I'm going to store that here's the store button down here do you see it right above the on button gives me my arrow and I'll store that is I'm going to use h just like we did when we were talking about derivatives so h is going to be delta x here. Now I'm going to start out by taking 0 and store it as m. And I'm going to take 0 and also store it as uh, l. So that starts out m and, n. M and l is 0, no matter what there was in there before. And we're going to take a and store it as x. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to do a, a set number of things over and over again a specific number of times, specifically n times. Well, that's what, in programming, that's what we use a for loop for. So program number four, the control is four. And we want a, a counting variable, alpha k, I'm going to use running from 1 to n. This is exactly like the uh, the index on our sum. In fact, that's essentially what this is going to going to do for us. At the hit enter at the end of every line, it brings us back to a new line, which is indicated by these here. You don't have to type anything for them. Um, so what we want to do is we want to evaluate y1. Okay, so so to get y1 you hit variables right arrow to y variables and hit number one and then one again or if you've got the newer operating system you can just do alpha trace which is f4 and it's the first one there and hit enter so we want to evaluate that at whatever x is actually that x is probably optional because it'll default to x but I'm going to take that and I'm going to add to that whatever l is And then I'm going to store the answer back in L. So notice the first time through, it'll find the Y value at, well, X is A, at the left end, and add it to L. So what is L? L is going to be a running sum of the left, uh, the, the Y values at the left end. So it's part of what we need for a left Riemann sum. 
Now what I need to do is move over to the midpoint. So I need to move over half a delta x. Okay, so I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to say x plus uh, h over 2. Store that as x. So now x is being moved over by half a delta x. I'm going to take y1 again of x. But this time I'm going to add it to whatever is in m. With the answer being stored back in m. Okay, now I want to move over uh, x one more half of a delta x. So I take x plus uh, h over 2 and store that as x. So now at the end of this series of steps, what have we done? We started at, we took x as a, we found y1 of that, we added it to l, l was originally 0. So now we just got y1 of a and l. We moved over by half of a delta x and made that our new x, found the y there, added to m. m was originally 0. So now we have the y value at the midpoint of the first interval in m and y at the midpoint of the left foot of the first interval in l. And now our x is at the right end of the first interval or left end of the second interval. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to program and hit end, which is number 7 there. And that ends the for loop. So what this does is when it gets to end, it, it goes, uh, adds 1 to k. So k is now 2, and it goes up here, and it does this again. Now what's it going to do on the second time? It's going to take y1 of, of the x value that we just found, uh, which was at the, the left end of the second interval, add it to the l. Remember at this point, l was the, uh, the y at the left end of the first interval. Now the l, after we store this, is going to be the sum of the two y values at the left of the first two intervals. Again, move over another half an delta dex, find an m, uh, find, find a, a y value at the midpoint, add that to the m, and so m is the sum of the two y values at the first two intervals. And we end up at the, end, the left end of the third interval, or the right end of the second interval, each way, whether, whichever way you want to think of that. And then we do it again, and again, and again, and again. We do this n times. When it does the last time, what, where are we? Well, x is all the way at the right end of the last interval. It's at b. And l will be the sum of all of the y values at all the left ends of each of the subintervals. m will be the y values at this midpoint of each interval all added up. And n would turn, becomes what uh, k becomes 1 plus n. And so instead of going back, it goes on to the next step. Okay. So... If you think about the right and left Riemann sums, the y values there are all the same except for the ones on the end. So what we want to do is we want to take uh, L and we want to add to that y1 of uh, B, but we want to subtract off y1 of a and that is going to we're going to store that in r so now r is what now r is the sum of all the y values at the right end of each interval now we need to go ahead and turn these into um, Riemann sums by multiplying by that delta x which is h so we want to take, uh, uh, let's see, L times H and store that back in L. So now L is actually the left Riemann sum uh, within rectangles. We do R times H and let's store that back in R. So now R is the right Riemann sum. And we can do... To get trapezoid, remember it's left uh, plus right divided by 2. It's just the average of left and right. So I'm going to store that as t. And now remember, it doesn't matter what was in t before, it's being replaced. So you don't have to worry about setting t up at the beginning. 
So there's T, and the midpoint is just going to be what we had for M already times H. Store that as M. And now we have the midpoint rule. And then to get the Simpson's rule, what we do is we take parentheses trapezoid rule plus 2 times the midpoint rule. and divide by 3 and we're going to store that as Simpsons. So now uh, L, R, T, and M are left in, right in, T, N, and M point in and S is uh, Simpsons 2 in uh, the way that's, that that's labeled. I would still think of that as just in rectangles but it's labeled as twice that much. And now we've got everything that we need we just need to display our answer. So I'm going to put in uh, a display statement. That's going to be an input-output thing. I want to display. That's number three. And I want to display uh, some text. So I'm going to go to alpha lock, quote, and it'll display this text. Now I want to know, I need it to tell me uh, the things in the right order. So it's L, uh, R, T, oops. Let me copy. That should be. Oh, I forgot. L. I forgot it was an alpha lock. Take that off. Comma R. Comma T. Comma M. Comma S. And. Of course, it depends a little bit on the function, but usually these are basically increasing order of, of accuracy. Left and right are usually considered, in theory, the same. Trapezoid's better than that. Midpoint's a little better than that. Simpson's quite a bit better than the others. So this is going to print on the screen LRTMS with commas between them so that we know uh, the, the when I see the order, I know what order the things are when they print out. So now I'm going to display the actual values. Uh, I.O. and display and I want to do the same thing that I did here with but without the quotes L comma R comma T comma alpha M alpha S and that is the entire program so I don't have to worry about saving. If I just do quit, it'll automatically, automatically save that. So let me uh, let's check this out. So to run the program, what you do is you hit Y equals. You put a formula in here. So let me just say for for the example that I put in x to the fifth power here. So put whatever formula in Y1 it has to be in Y1. Remember because we, we used Y1 in our program. And now we go to program. Uh, find it in a list, either go down to it, hit enter, or just type the number. Hit enter to run that program. It's going to ask me for A. Let's say if we go from 1 to 4. So A is 1, B is 4. And let's say we do it with, say, 10 subdivisions. And, uh, well, oops. Let's try again. To enter, it should do it again. One, two, four, ten sub intervals. And there it tells us if you can see it left, right, trapezoid, midpoint, Simpsons. Left, right, trapezoid, midpoint, Simpsons rule. And uh, let me just double check these against what I've got here, make sure everything's in correctly. Yeah. So you could check your program by running that and making sure you get this these numbers for answers and that's all there is to it it's a pretty simple little program the only thing you do need to remember is is that uh, for example I put in n equals 10 so this is L10 R10 T10 M10 and S20 the S is uh, the the uh, the number on the S is twice whatever the N is in this program so as long as you remember that you're uh, you're good to go if you wanted to, you could actually 
uh, go back here and edit that, we, we want to point that out. You can edit the program and uh, we could write something in there, uh, text about, tell it to display some text about uh, Simpson's rule being uh, two, two times the n is what's being generated here. Uh, I'm not going to mess with it right now. I'm going to just leave it alone. So there's a program. That's, and that's how you put it in.